We've been working on linear functions and linear situations. When something is linear, what does that mean? When, yeah, when you look at it and you see it on a graph, it means it makes a straight line, right? That's linear. But you're going to be able, you're going to have to be able to identify it from different situations, from a table, from a graph, from the word problems. An example would be Javier knocked over his 24 ounce bottle of cola. The cola poured out of the bottle at a rate of four ounces every second. Complete the following information showing the relationship between S, the number of seconds that have passed, and C, the ounces of cola remaining in the bottle. Okay, well, first off is, what's the independent variable and what's the dependent? Independent should be the thing that happens first. So as the seconds go by, the cola, the ounces of cola goes down, right? So at the very beginning, at zero seconds, how much soda does he have in the bottle? 24, because it said it was a 24 ounce, right? Yeah, 24 ounce. Now, after one second, it decreases by how much? Four. After two seconds... Why would I put a four? I did not mean to put a four. I was trying to multitask and tell somebody to focus with me. It goes down by four, so I'm sorry. This should go down to 20. Now, after two seconds, this should decrease to what? 16. Three, 12, four, eight, five, four. They didn't have another spot because now when I go to six seconds, what happens? Zero. Okay, so if I go to graph that, down here, you have to make sure you're labeling your graphs. The um, X is the number of seconds. The Y is the ounces of soda. So I have, at zero seconds, I have 24 ounces of soda. At one second, it goes down to 20. Two seconds to 16, three seconds, it goes to 12, four seconds, what do we say, eight, five seconds is four, and at six seconds, it's at zero. Now, do I leave them as dots, or do I draw a line between it? Meaning, is it discrete or continuous? What is it we're talking about? How much soda comes out of that? When it's falling out, does it fall out and just go four just disappears at a time? No, it gradually goes down through every number. That means that it is continuous. So I would go and connect the dots. Because between those two points, it works, it goes through every number. So I know that this is continuous. This right here, 0, 24, what does that mean? That's the starting point. That means that at that starting point, but what does it mean? That ordered pair is 0, 24. What's the 0? The 0 seconds. So when they start, how much soda is in the bottle? Okay, so it means that when they start, there is 24 ounces in the bottle. Now, what about down here? That's 6, 0. What does that mean? Where it crosses the x-axis. Yeah, the number of ounces that there's zero sodas left. So that means after six seconds, is there any more soda in there? After six seconds, the soda's gone. Now, a lot of people had problems with this next one right here on writing the equation. Y equals 
How much are we starting with? 24. And what are we doing? Increasing or decreasing? We are decreasing, so I'm subtracting off how much? Four seconds. Or four seconds. Four ounces per second. That rate of change, this right here that's going down by four, right? Minus four over one. That's what goes with your X. That's the coefficient. One of the biggest mistakes is that people will try and tell me that the equation to this is Y equals 4X minus 24. Why is this equation wrong? Because when, yeah, this would say in this table, it would say we started with 0 and negative 24 ounces. Can you start with negative 24 ounces in a soda? No. All right, let's look at the next one. It says Lana ran a tie-dye booth at the local carnival. It cost her $360 to buy the supplies, um, and she sold the shirts for $15. Complete the following information showing the relationship between S, the number of shirts sold, <clears throat> and P, the profit. Okay. First off, how much did it cost her to make these shirts. <clears throat> yes, the supplies, it's 360. That's how much it costs her to get by the t-shirts and to make them. So before she sells any shirts, you should have this written down on your paper. Before she sells any shirts, it costs her 360. Now profit is how much you make on something, right? So now, you know what? I put 360, but if I if I went and I spent it, should it be positive or negative? It should be negative cuz I'm in debt. After I sell one shirt, am I losing more money or am I gaining it back? I'm gaining it back, so I'm increasing here by $15. So now after one shirt, I'm in debt by 3 negative 300 and $45. At two shirts, again, this is going to increase up by $15. I should have negative 330. That's how much I'm in debt, or Lana is. Three shirts, negative 315. Four shirts, Negative 300, five shirts, negative 285. Okay, so let's go over here to our graph and let's graph that. I've got zero and 300, negative 360. I have one, oh, let me see if I can do this with my mouse here. One and negative 345. Yeah, because it's going by 15s. Oh, oh, don't do that. Maybe I have to. Golly gee, here we go. 2 and negative 330. Each line is going by 15. So this is how it's increasing and going up. Holy moly, that's hard to see when you're looking on a computer trying to put in the dots. Now, why am I trying? I want to finish my graph, and I want to go up here to my x-axis. Why would I be trying to do that? What is that number on the x-axis telling me? I think I heard it. To make a profit back, that's not quite the words, but it's close. That point right there says 24, 0. At, at 24 shirts, what? No, it's right here at 24. At 24 shirts, the pro, it says 0. So I went from negative to 0. This point right here, this is a break-even point. This is when we get out of debt. Right? Because we don't owe any more money. We, we haven't lost any money. So now after the 24 shirts, that, that's when she starts making some real money, right? Because until then, she, she, all her numbers are negative so that she's still in debt. So up here at 24 
shirts, she breaks even. At 24 shirts, she breaks even. Now, on your equation, y equals, you can write this a couple different ways. One way, I could say $15 times each shirt, right, is how much I'm making, but what do I have to subtract off? $360. Because that's how much my startup cost was, right? Or you could write it y equals negative 360, because it has to be negative because I'm in debt, plus 15x. Both of those say the same things because the negative 360 or the 360 is negative in both of them. Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one, it just gives us this graph and a table. And we need to find the equation. Oh, you know what? I need to go back a second. In this situation, am I supposed to draw the line to connect the dots? Like what I'm asking, is this continuous or discrete? Why is it discrete? Right, you can't, even though it's a half shirt or it shows your belly, it's not half of a shirt, right? Right, you're buying one shirt or two shirts. Two shirts. Okay, so yes, it is discrete. So looking at this right here, is this graph continuous or discrete? <laughs> discrete because it's only dots. Okay, so now though, let's fill in our table. I have 0, 2, 1 and 6, 3 and 14. That skipped 4 or 2, so let's just go right there. And 6 and 26. Okay, it only gave us some of the points. So if I go right here, what is this increasing by? 4. Y is increasing by 4 and X is increasing by 1. So here it increases by 1. So what should it increase by here? 4. four. So 6 plus 4 is 10. All right, makes sense because, again, going up by 4, going up by 1. So right here, I should have 18. And I should have 22. Okay, so I could go graph it and go 2 and 10. 4 and... Where is it? 18? 5 and 22. Now my equation. Y equals... What am I increasing by? 4X. My rate of change is 4. What's my starting point? Where's the beginning? Yeah, this right here is my starting point where it says zero. Zero and whatever your number is, that's your constant. So I'm going to put plus two. Now, on your paper, you should see that it says, Joshua had a shelf that had an initial weight of uh, blank pounds. For each book, he added to the shelf the weight Blank, blank, pounds. Okay, first off, how much, what did, she, what did he begin with? Two. So they started with two pounds. Now are we increasing or decreasing? Increasing by what? Four pounds. Exactly. Okay, let's look at the next one right here. Take a minute right now, and I want you to graph it and find your equation. All right, looking at the table, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the point 1 and 36. So I start at 1 and go up to 36. There it is. 2 and 33. 3 and 
guess what is it? It's going up by two, so right here. Four and twenty-seven. Is that right? 24, 26. Oh, I'm up a little bit too much, aren't I? That's 28. Uh, four, and try it again. One more up right here. There we go. And six and 21. Nine and 12. All right, now I want to figure out what my rate of change is, which is delta y, the change in y right here, minus 3. Um, what is that? That's minus 6, minus 6, minus 9. Now, we talked about it being linear. This right here, some people tell me it's not linear. But you can't just do this. You have to do delta x as well. You have to look at delta y divided by delta x. Plus 1, plus 2, plus 2, plus 3. Delta y over delta x. Negative 3 over 1 is negative 3. Negative 6 over 2, negative 3. Negative 9 over 3, negative 3. This is why I know it's linear, because delta y divided by delta x is the same. Okay, so if that's true, if I look at this, I need to go back and I need to find my, y, uh, my constant up here at 0. If I go backwards and put a 0 right here, what's y? It should be 39, right, because I've got to go back up 3. So my starting point's got to be up there at 39. So I'm going to have y equals, I'm going to start at 39, and what am I doing? Adding or subtracting? Subtracting 3 times x. That rate of change always goes with your x. You could write it this way, or you could have written y, or y equals negative 3x plus 39. Now down here, an example of how it could go in a word problem, Jackson received a blank gift card to Sonic. Each time he went, he bought the same, dr the same blank drink. So first off, how much is on the gift card? $39 is on the gift card. How much is each drink? $3 is what he's buying each time. All right, on your papers, flip them over. Okay, here's the next one. Right here we have the equation 2x plus 8. So what you can do is go in the calculator and go to y equals and put in there 2x plus 8. So let me pull up my handy dandy calculator. Oh, I don't want, I don't want to draw lines. Really? Let's try again. Why does it go away? There we go. It's being not very nice. So go in your calculators, go to y equals, and put in there 2x plus 9. Then you should be able to press second graph and look at your table. So Oh, actually, what should we do when we first get our calculators? Clear it. Second plus sign, 7, 1, 2. So we'll go to y equals, put in there 2x plus 8, I believe, is what it had. And let's fill in our table. So I'll go second graph, and from this table, I can get 0, 8, 1, 10. Okay, so here I've got 0, 8, 1 and 10, 2 and 12. Remember, I'm getting all of those from the this right here. 3 and 14, and 4 and 16. Is my line going to be increasing or decreasing? Increasing, because as the y's go up, the x's go up. 
So I have 0, 8, 1 and 10, 2 and 12, 3 and 14, 4 and 16. Those are my dots that I just graphed. So now, it says each Y value is blank more than blank the X value. First off, what, does, what operation is more than? Addition. So the Y value is blank more than. What are they adding over there on the equation? Okay, let me write Y equals 2X plus 8. Each y value is 8 more than, so we're adding 8 on to blank the x value, 2 times the x value, because 2 times x, 2 times the x value, plus 8. All right, on the next one. Mackenzie rented a pair of skates and for an initial value of blank. She must pay an additional blank per day. After six days, she will. Um, how much will she owe Ralph's rentals? Okay, well, let's go down here. Before we can answer that, let's look down here at this graph. I have a bunch of different information. On my graph here, this is zero and what? Zero and eight. So let's go in our table and put an eight. Then in the table, it gives me 1 and 11. So I'll go over to 1 and up to 11 and put a dot. But they gave me, oops, go away, calculator. They give me one other point on here, 4 and 20. So I'll go over here and I'll do 4 and 20. It's kind of like a puzzle. You're going to find the missing pieces and put them together. Now from here, we should be able to find our rate of change. So if I do delta y, the change in y, how am I getting from 8 to 11 plus 3 delta x plus 1? Okay, so look, from 1 to 2 plus 1, so this should be plus 3. So I should get 14. So every time my y's are going up by 3, my x's should be going up by 1. 17. Okay, well, that makes sense here. There's plus 3. There's plus 1, plus 1, plus 3. So there's 23. So I have 2 and 14, 3 and 17, 4 and 20, and 5 and 23. So my equation y equals, I'm increasing by 3, my rate of change is 3, x, and then what's my constant? What's my one-time charge? Where did I start at? 8, so it's plus 8. So there's my equation. So if I go and look at what the word problem said, Mackenzie rents, rates a pair of skates for an initial fee of. What's my initial fee? $8. That's what I pay at first. So first, so basically you're paying $8 for the, um, the skate, just a deposit for the skates. Then you pay an additional what per day? We pay $3 per day. And if we wanted to answer the question, how many, how much would we owe after six days? Six days, we would owe twenty-six dollars because it is increasing by three. So it would be twenty-six dollars. Twenty-six. 